we're going to be building the easiest and lowest fee full ETF portfolio end to end. Hello everyone, Alex is here. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I really hope you keep contributing to your portfolio on a regular basis. So it's growing more and more to the moon. One of the most important things investor needs to be doing in order to grow their portfolio is regular contributions. You gotta stick with them no matter what. And then stock market is gonna do all the rest for you. Previously, I talked about all-in-one single ETF portfolios. I also talked about three ETF portfolios, how they differ, what they do, and what works for who and what not. So if you really wanna make the most out of your investment portfolio without adding any hassle to it, you gotta stick around till the end of the video because your mind is gonna be blown away. As today, we're gonna to be building the easiest and lowest fee full ETF portfolio end to end. And there are a couple of things we're going to be focusing on to make this happen. As low mirror, great returns, super easy to manage and rebalance, super safe for you so you're not losing anything, and very well diversified. And you would think that it's as easy as going through the lowest ETFs on the ETF list in Canada, which is, as we talked about, 890 of those there. Yeah, that's a lot. And picking just the lowest fees from there, and just creating a portfolio out of that. Yeah, that probably can work, but it's not gonna work as you need to look at other things as well, not just expense ratio. So now let's take a look at each of these points and see why we actually look at those and how we are gonna decide which ETF we're gonna be adding to our portfolio. And the first one is the lowest expense ratio, right? So generally the US ETFs have actually lowest fee compared to Canadian ETFs. Why? Nobody knows. But what it means for us is that we're going to grab actually a couple ETFs from US and we're going to add it to our portfolio as well. And the next one is diversification. So we're going to be looking at equity ETFs and also fixed income ETFs. And we're going to filter out everything that tracks specific sector like finance or industrial. And we're going to be looking at the all market cap ETFs only that track specific index. For example, the total US market ETF. And the second part for this is that we need to allocate our ETFs properly so we have a proper risk level for our portfolio. Today I'm going to be focusing on the growth level portfolio so we have an 80% of equity and 20% of fixed income. You can rebalance this yourself depending what goals you have and where you are with your investments right now and for how long you can stick around and not use your investments in your specific situation. But generally, 80% equity and 20% fixed income investment portfolios are good for investment accounts that you can keep for 10 years or more. And you can shuffle things around going forward if you think you need to be less risky than you are right now. The third point is returns. So we're not going to be predicting stock market, what's going to happen in the stock market and how it's going to move up and down and whatnot. We're going to be tracking the all market cap and flow with the market basically. So we're not expecting huge returns. We're not going to be trying to beat the market. We're going to be expecting around 7 to 12% returns annually. And of course, this is going to be a little different based on your specific allocation into equity and fixed income. As equity will drive you more returns, but it's going to be a little more risky. And fixed income is going to be less returns, but also it's going to be less risky. And the fourth point is rebalancing and managing your portfolio. As our portfolio is going to be a full ETF portfolio, then it's not going to be super hard to manage it. What you would be needing to do is contribute to your investment account and based on your allocations, you would purchase the required ETF. And we're going to take a look at the example for our growth portfolio and see how the allocation works there so you know what you can do for your portfolio as well. So now let's finally build our portfolio and let's take a look what the ETFs are going to be adding to it. And the first one is going to be VTI, which is Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. And this is one of the most popular ETF on the Yes stock market and has a super low fee as well, which is 0.03%, which means that for a $100,000 investment portfolio that only invest into VTI, so you have everything allocated to VTI on your portfolio, for example, you'll be paying only $30 fee per year. This is pretty good, right? Comparing to a mutual fund with a 2% fee, it's gonna be $2,000 per year. All right, don't compare it, it's just ridiculous. 
So VTI actually tracks the performance of the US total market index. It has large, mid and small cap equity diversified across growth and value stocks. It's a passively managed ETF that tracks the specific index. And for our portfolio, we're gonna allocate 35% to VTI. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is the VCN.to. And this one is on the Canadian stock market and it's a Vanguard Canada All Cap Index ETF. This one actually tracks the performance of the Canada All Cap Domestic Index to the extent possible and has a passively managed full replication strategy where possible. It provides a broad exposure to large, mid, small cap companies in Canada. And VCN is going to account for 25% of our today's portfolio. And this one has a very low MER as well at 0.06%. So it's one of the lowest fees ETF on the Canadian stock market that you might consider adding to your portfolio, regardless of what we're building here. It's just a great ETF to have in your portfolio. Let's move to the next one, which is very important, is VIU.TO. It's a Vanguard developed all cap except North America index ETF. So this one also can be purchased on Toronto Star Exchange, which is pretty good. And this one pretty interesting because it tracks the performance of the developed all cap excluding North America index to the extent possible before fees and expenses. And this one has a passively managed full application strategy to provide exposure to the developed globally equity markets. So it basically has companies outside of Canada and US. So we are now diversifying ourselves outside of Canada and US which is pretty good, so we are not relying only on the economic conditions of US and Canada. And this one's gonna have allocation in our portfolio for 23%. This one actually has the highest fee across all other ETFs for our today's portfolio, which is 0.22%. So we are now finished with our equity part of our portfolio. We have VTI, VCM, and VIU, and it's gonna be 80% of our entire ETF portfolio for today, and we have two more ETFs to go. Now we're going to be moving on into our fixed income ETFs. And the first one is VAB, which is the Vanguard Canadian Aggregate Bond Index ETF. So this one actually tracks the performance of the Bloomberg Barclays Global Aggregate Canadian Float Adjusted Bond Index. That's a pretty long name. To the extent possible, it has a passively managed index sample strategy to gain exposure to the investment grade Canadian bond market. And this one provides a modern current income with a high credit quality. This one has a pretty low fee as well, it's at 0.09%, which is pretty good. It's a very low fee considering all the other ETFs out there and what they provide to you. And we're gonna have a 15% allocation for our portfolio today. And the final ETF to fully complete our lowest fee ETF portfolio is gonna be VWO, which is the Vanguard Emerging Markets ETF. And this ETF invests in stocks of companies located in the emerging markets around the world such as China, Brazil, Taiwan, and South Africa. And this one is same as VTI, can be purchased on a US stock market. The goal of this ETF is to track the return of the emerging market all cap China A inclusion index. This ETF has a high potential for growth, but also has a higher risk. The share value of this ETF can swing up and down more often and more drastically than any other stocks of any developed countries, including USA. In my opinion, this ETF is appropriate for long-term portfolios. That's why I'm adding it to a growth portfolio we're looking at today. So now we have a fully functional lowest fee ETF portfolio that consists of five different ETFs. And our total expense ratio for the entire portfolio is gonna be 0.095%, which is very low even if you compare to the lowest ETFs out there. And especially, it's a super low if you compare it to the any mutual funds or any other actively managed ETFs out there. It is also a very safe portfolio. You're not trying to beat the market. You're actually sticking with the market and you're getting a very good returns with it. You're also very well diversified into fixed income and equity and also into outside of US and Canada markets. And also you're diversifying into emerging markets as well. You're basically diversifying yourself into the entire market and you're covered from the, all the fronts in case some other weird economic conditions might appear. And this portfolio is also very well suited specifically for RSP accounts. Why? Because we have two US ETFs in our portfolio today, VTI and VWO, just because they have very low MER and they also track pretty good indexes that we care about. 
but because they're from US, you need to keep in mind that if you're not holding this ETFs on your RSP account, you'd be required to pay withholding taxes on your dividends. But RSP accounts are tax exempt from US dividend taxes if your portfolio receives US dividends. And these ETFs are not paying huge dividends, but still there are some dividends that are going to be coming up to your account. But also because these ETFs have actually super low fees, that's still better than investing into some higher fees ETFs on the Canadian stock market. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're deciding which account you wanna use to build your portfolio. And overall, you can see that you can do a lot with ETFs. You can build a single ETF portfolio, you can use three ETF solution portfolio, or you can build the lowest fee ETF portfolio. So whatever works for you, just decide and keep investing. For this specific situation, a combination of Vanguard ETFs, I think suited very well for this lowest ETF portfolio. But you also can take a look at other companies out there like BlackRock or Horizons or BMO and most of them have alternatives to each other with a very similar expense ratio. So if you're not comfortable investing into Vanguard, I don't know why you wouldn't be. You can choose BlackRock, Horizons or BMO or any other ETF providers. With all that, thank you very much for sticking around. I hope you learned something for yourself. And let me know in comments if you have any questions or suggestions or you want to chat about anything else. You can find the links to Questrade or Wealthsimple in my description box. If you sign up with those, you can get some dollars into your account as bonuses. You can use to buy stonks after that or ETFs and build the lowest fee ETF portfolio. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, and I'll see you around. Stay safe out there. Cheers, bye.